This and every episode of the podcast is supported by 35 Bikes. 35 Bikes are dedicated to bringing you the best bike components for the best price. So whether you need organic, semi-metal or sintered brake pads, a new narrow-wide chainring, mud guards or brake rotors, make sure to ask for 35 Bikes in your local bike shop or head to 35bikes.com for more information or to find your local stockist. You're listening to the Hook It Podcast. Proudly brought to you by hookitproducts.co.uk. Riders ready? Watch the gate. Oh, yeah! Boom. Here we are, dropping into episode number 23 of the Hook It Podcast. If you're a new listener, then welcome to the party. If you're an existing listener and you've been listening to these episodes for a little while, then huge thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the continued feedback and all that sort of stuff. Um, It's much appreciated and it is really starting to help the podcast grow. So thank you. Obviously, if you haven't already, go leave a review on iTunes. It means the world to me, to us. For mountain biking, you're doing mountain biking a service if you leave a review on iTunes of this podcast. Um, Anyway, a little bit of hooking news. Um, We've got loads of stuff going on at the minute. All Mountain Style uh, just releasing a riding jersey which is really nice 100% polyester riding jersey three quarter sleeves they're available to view over on our website it's uh, hookitproducts.co.uk and if you are interested make sure you tell your local dealer uh, we've just released some new 35 bikes mud guards they are limited edition they are in collaboration with an artist called lucifer toby loose and um, most importantly the the lucifer's tree we've called it is rad such a nice mud guard so don't forget to check those out um, and we will be giving one of those away this week as well on the on the uh, social media networks. So make sure you follow us. Um, that's about it. We've got Jim and Stu on this show this week from Pin TV. As most people are probably 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 blah 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 hear about pin tv how it's grown how it became what it is where it's going everything so there we go without further ado let's welcome jim and Stu from pin tv to the podcast Oosh. all right guys episode number 23 is here with the guys from pin tv we've got jim and Stu joining us today for a chat so uh hey guys how's it going all right thank you how are you very good very pretty good. good pretty good thank you mate i must really like you guys because i'm in newquay it's pretty <laughs> nice and i'm sat in the hotel room <laughs> that is crap what are you doing down there um so just normal dealer visits for me to be honest uh, um obviously i look after drug dealer home. yeah something like that something like that yeah well, i guess we should be honored then are we uh, you could say that. <laughs> now, nah, before I came up to my room, I was looking outside, just like, oh, it's beautiful. Like, you see the ocean, but hey, it's all good, guys. It's all good. I'll not hold. I'll not hold it against you. <laughs> well, thanks so much for taking the time out of your enjoyable <laughs> schedule to talk to us. What can I say? Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll say the same. And you know, back in the day when I used to go visit dealers, I had yeah. no time for anyone. <laughs> it's pretty time consuming eh? especially the drive down today i came from um like minehead area which isn't too far but um obviously took the trip down from sheffield to there yesterday so it's been a it's been a big week yeah. so far this week but it's all good it's all nice. good living the dream some would say some will probably disagree but there we go um <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah obviously we've got jim and Stu. so we've got a, a double podcast team again which is should be should be a laugh but uh but yeah massive thanks for doing this it's appreciated we've been trying to get it sorted for ages haven't we um yeah so uh, thank you no 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 yeah, no, no problem not at all, not at all. It's, uh, hopefully we've got some pin tv listeners as well for the first time um, yes share the love share the love share the love so i think the best thing to do to kick things off is to sort of do a bit of an introduction from both of you if that's okay so if we start with Stu. Um, hmm. Just a brief introduction of, of like who you are and ultimately what you do. Well, that's putting me on the spot a bit, isn't it? <laughs> uh, right, okay, then I'll, I'll make it brief. Yeah. 
I don't think it's going to be very exciting, to be honest. My name is Stu Hughes. Jim likes to tell everyone my middle name is Kevin, <laughs> which, which it is. Um, I am a self-employed builder. I've been doing it for years and years and years. And in between that, I ride mountain bikes. And uh, me and Jim have been riding together for probably 20 years plus now. And um, we've had a lot of good times. And... You know, really, without going into great detail, that's what it's all about. We've just been riding bikes and having fun and, you know, travelling around the world and Europe and getting out there, really. Sweet. Perfect. Um, all right, Jim, your shot. Uh, Jim Buchanan. I'm uh, 21 years old and a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I've been in and around mountain biking and a bit of mountain bike journalism for back in the day, dirt, MBUK, um, I think did something for one called Shred at one point. Okay. And uh, then obviously recently, very recently, is Enduro Mag. And now we started up Pin TV. I race a lot, mad on bikes. And I'm also, my trade is a tree surgeon, which I do a bit less nowadays because of this stuff. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's me really. Sweet. Perfect. Perfect. So I think... Like, like we've just done, it'd be pretty cool just to sort of keep going through a few questions which I've got written down, but we'll just go kind of in turn until we've figured out a little bit more about you guys, if that's all right. Um, okay. So, Stu, how did you get into riding um, way back in the day? <laughs> Not oh, as far well, back I mean, as Jim, though, no. <laughs> no, I, I actually think I was uh, mountain biking very, very slightly earlier than Jim in terms of racing, which I think was probably about 95 Right. Um, and previous to that, I, I'd raced motocross since I was 16. Uh, I had a big crash when I was 21, and I had quite a lot of time off, really. So just went out and bought a mountain bike for a bit of training, and then never really um, got back into the motocross, just sort of found out about downhill mountain biking. And I thought, I wouldn't mind having a look at that. So um, I had a look, and the rest is history, really. I mean, I, I raced downhill from 95 up until 2003. Um, and then I had uh, 10 years off, in which time I raced mini bikes, um, motocross, enduro, uh, and then got back into mountain biking again in 2013, I think it was. And right. Yeah, I'm loving it. It's good. Sick. Perfect. Yeah, going back as well to the to the mini bike stuff, I remember telling you many years ago, probably now, that you used to be my idol on the mini bike circuit. <laughs> um you had that. Oh, I don't say that to him. Nah, man. Well. Stu was the boy back in the day on the mini bike yeah. circuit. Let's world be real. champion. I know, world champion. Did you go to Vegas and do the world championships or something? Yeah, yeah, we went out. We went out to the States. We went to uh, San Francisco. We raced in Vegas. Um, we drank a lot. <laughs> we did um, some good stuff. I had good fun out there. It was really cool. Yeah, sick. You know, there was a photo of you. I've told you before, <laughs> At Finningley, railing a berm in some white and blue Troy Lee kit, and I had it on my bedroom wall when I was younger. That's <laughs> honestly that is legit. That is legit. Honestly, I swear that. I swear on my life. Um, oh, well, don't tell too many people that, will you? Nah, I probably won't. But yeah, I wish I still had it. It was a rad photo, though. If, I don't know if you remember it. It's it a good job with friends, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but no, the, the mini bike thing was a good. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was, um, you know, it went really big and. Everybody did it, and, and we just had such a good time, yeah. and it was just, just good. I but, think it's got know, to come back again soon. I mean, it's, it's got to come back full circle again soon. Well, it has. It has. I mean, um, a friend of mine, Craig Rose, he's mad for it, and he's really good. They've actually got the uh, Mini Bike World Championships at Caps this year. Oh, really? Um, so it is. It's more, I think it's more serious than it was first time round. Um, you know, there's a lot of top motocrosses doing it. Mm. Um, but... You know, it's a good thing. You know, I'd love to have a go again, but the old hip's a bit knackered. So uh, sitting down on those little bikes is hard going, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but it was a, it's a huge scene for a few years, wasn't it? Like, you remember yeah, like, Tristan from Mini Bike Pro? I used to know Tristan, obviously, and God, he was killing it with the Mini Bike Pro website and stuff. Yeah, no, he was really good, yeah. Mm. Um, I did quite a lot with him. He was good to us, and, um, you know, he supported us through the, you know, the early years of racing pit bikes. So, um if it weren't for him, probably wouldn't have ended up doing a lot of stuff we did. So, yeah, yeah that was really good. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. All right, dude. Well, uh, how about you, Jim? How did you first initially start riding bikes? Um, 
Right, I uh, very late starter, really. I started at the age of about 24, something like that, mm-hmm. messing about on cross-country bikes, um, dicking about going up Canuck and places like that. Back in the day, before like trail centres, just sort of find your way around. And then I moved to Shrewsbury um, for a job down here. And there was like a local group ride, Mid Shropshire Wheelers, went up to Eastridge. So I went up with them a lot. And I remember seeing this daft twat with thin in hair, but it was long. And we're going up this big, big long hill. And he's like pulling a wheelie alongside me all the way up. And I, it was the first time I'd sort of seen someone doing that. Right. I was like, fucking hell. And I got talking to him. Obviously, it was Stu. <laughs> and uh, we got on really well. And so that's. You know, that's how it all started, and he was riding. I don't know, we had a, you know, what did you have then, Stuart? So GT, uh, the red one, what was it? Uh, that was LTS, that was. That's it, yeah. All right, okay. I've been trying to get oh, rid yeah. of the fucking bloke for about 20 years, and he won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, he got, he got me into the racing, right. and uh, got into that. I raced mountain bikes from... About ninety six to two thousand and uh, two thousand and two, I think. At that point, I was writing a lot for Dirt Magazine, mm-hmm. and I was almost doing. T- I just did too many races, and I started not enjoying it. It's all downhill stuff, um, and I mean, I was like, if it was a motorbike, I'd say I was clubman level. You know, I wasn't pro like Stu, but I had a lot of fun and. Me and him dicked about a lot, and we were like the idiots at the races. Um, and so the one morning, I just thought, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And I had it's like a mint deal with a Sten deck and a, like full on down, giant downhill bike and all spare wheels with tires and bits of it. And I just didn't want to do it. So I went home and I give it all back. And I got, <laughs> I got, I'd like this deal and I give it to somebody else. And I just had like 10 years down to got into the same with you uh doing the mini biking right um and then into moto enduro for five years and sort of got up to a, a kind of expert level ish yeah and then i was getting on a bit and then um got to the stage i was well that was costing me an absolute fortune and it's nearly <laughs> crippling me um, and I heard about the new thing called Enduro on mountain bikes in 2012. I thought, oh, I'd be quite good at that because I did motorbike Enduro. What a knob thinking that. Um, so I got in touch with little Dan Brown from, um, well, it was GT at the time, you know, the, yeah. with the Athertons. He sorted me out a bike at a real good price and absolutely clueless. After having it three weeks, I went into an Enduro at Eastridge, one of the UK GEs, and got smoked because I thought I was being clever having really sticky tacky downhill tyres on that I'd uh, skanked off the Athertons and I I nearly had a heart attack by the end of the day trying to ride up those hills (laughs) but yeah I just took it from there and then I found out about Endura Mag and such as such that's where I am now really with uh, Pin TV. Excellent excellent so did you already have like ties in the industry when you sort of came back to it then so you had like 10 years out but was it easy to get back into it if that makes sense well yeah i came into it still got a few friends in it and i mean not many yeah not definitely <laughs> not that in there but um i was sort of yeah dan brown you know we, we, being from shropshire and there's a big bunch of us over here we the, and there's quite a lot of industry folk in shropshire so it's quite good like that yeah. And riding with people at the time, you know, people like Donnie, who was like the fastest Enduro rider in the UK. That was quite cool. Um, and these people sort of influence you a bit and make you want to ride fast. The problem is, you always, at my level, you're always riding with twats who are quicker than you. And it's embarrassing, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people feel that pain, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I've ridden with Stu for God knows how many years. And <laughs> nearly beat him once. I went to one race about a year ago. I beat him and I'd never plug my bloody timing thing in and didn't get a time. Oh, that was great. All right. <laughs> yeah. That old, that old yeah. chestnut, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Stu, you mentioned you had like a bit of a, 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 well, you did have a downhill career for quite a number of years. Is there a specific highlight in there or is there anything you can say, you know, as to, as to what level you got to? 
Um, I know going way back, you know, I, I kind of met you, I guess, through Petey. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing again that you were riding British downhill and maybe some yeah. world champs as well or not? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I was quite lucky, really. I mean, I started out, I've always been motivated to try and do well in whatever I do. So that helps. And I pushed myself quite a lot. Um, and I was lucky I got picked up by a couple of people that give me some help and just sort of managed to, you know, develop my skills quite quickly, really. And I went from being sort of, you know, the average senior. And in a couple of seasons, I was in elite and, you know, banging bars with um, some good riders, getting top fives. You know, I won quite a few races in pro. Um, so, yeah, that was cool. But I found good motivation to do that. I felt like I was in a good sport. Um, everybody that I met was, you know, they're all decent people. And, and, you know, back then, more importantly, the the party scene was massive. I mean, you know, everybody had a beer every night. Yeah. You know, it, it was... It was just good, you know. Everybody had a good time, um, and it was it was a big social scene. I can't remember half of the bloody nights we had out because we were that pissed. But it, you know, it was good. It worked well for me, and you know, I had some some bloody good years racing in that. I got a second once at national champs behind PT, right? Uh, so that was cool. Um, I represented Britain, the actual Great Britain team at the Worlds at Capron. Um, and I've been Midlands champion quite a few times, so I've, I've had some good success. I have, yeah. I've had a good career, really. Yeah, yeah. Is there a, a specific highlight in there which you think is like, you'd say it's the pinnacle of your career, of your career, or have you not have you not got to it yet? <laughs> is he still are you still searching? Well, no, I mean, I'm still a racer. At the end of the yeah. day, I'm still a racer, and if, you know, if I said I was going out there to take part and that was it, I would be lying because every race I go to, I do want to win. Yeah. You know, I, the, the fire's still there. I'm still motivated, and um, I don't like it. If somebody says, oh, you're a bit old to be doing that, and you can't do it, and that sounds, that fires me up, and I'm ready to give it some more. So, But with regards to actual highlights, um, it's a difficult one, because even when I got the the um, silver medal to PT at Hopton back in 2002, uh, he crashed in the race, so obviously that's... And nobody wants to win by default. Yeah. Um, and although I got second, I had a really crap run. I couldn't right. believe it when it come back. It was, uh, it was one of the worst runs I'd had all weekend. So I must have been going quite well. But, um, you know, if you'd have had one of those races where I felt like I'd really, really earned it, I guess that would have been the pinnacle. But, you know, I just thought I'd had a pretty uh, mediocre ride down and the result set up. So, huh. um, and, I mean, every time you win a race is a, is a highlight, surely. I mean... Everybody wants to win, and you, it's not guaranteed. So, you know, you should never rest on your laurels, as they say. You know, always yeah. uh, respect, always respect the you know the races, and when you do get that win, then it's always a buzz. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You he's a, he's, a, Go on, he's sorry, a twat, Jim. Davey. I will, I will say he's a twat. He's one of them blokes. And I'm sure you sure you know a few of these blokes who, whatever they do, they're fucking good at it, and it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. And like, like we'll go go karting, for instance, and I get you know when we go all the Shrewsbury lads, there'll be say twenty of us, and I might manage sort of fifth or sixth. Stu or Donny will always win it, no matter how. <laughs> What are the conditions like? I took him. I took him to bloody. He had to go at enduro um, last year. No, year before last, I think it was. I remember the last round. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> thought he'd go. So he says, "Take him along." He done fuck all training, uh, and he had he had downhill tires on as well. And he was like, <laughs> "It's like a bright shade of beetroot all the way round." And he was steam coming out of the top of his waterproof, I'm and he was the best and I think in one stage on the snotty stuff he got like second fastest overall and everyone all these people were like who's this old bastard who's come along and smoked us so yeah he's just, he's just one of them lucky people David you know yeah yeah yeah. That's That's cool, yeah, That's yeah. Cool. you make your own look boys you do yeah. indeed you do yeah. indeed you do indeed you don't sometimes your own you... hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you can't make your own talent either it's just one of those things that you're sort of born with um, well, it's, it's a curse, weird, really, you know. It's, no, yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> but it's weird <laughs> how you see people do that. They'll transition into a sport and be fast at it pretty much straight away. Like, I think 
it, Gwyn may be a bit of an example of that. Like, sort of just made the transition over from... I mean, he was saying he was racing moto and he just transitioned over to downhill and was one of the fastest in the world yeah. within a few years. Like, it's just a natural ability oh, to... Oh, yeah, I think so. To yeah, go I mean, fast any, on a any, bike. Any type of... Certainly bike racing, I think whatever you're doing, whether it's mountain bike, motocross, um, you know, road bike racing, you know... You, that thing, it's sort of, uh, it's in your mind and, and the actual fundamentals of, um, you know, making what you're doing become practical. They're all fairly simple. Obviously, you've got you know, a few little changes, but if you've got it in your head and you're confident with speed and, you know, you're good with lines, things like that, I think it all does go hand in hand, really. Yeah, definitely. No, I totally agree with you. I totally, totally agree. Um, yeah, I've got a few friends very similar. You know, you can rock up to a dual event having not ridden a bike for years and just smoke everyone it's it's just some people can just do it i don't know it's one of them in it it's one of them but you mentioned before Stu, the the party scene with downhill many years ago uh, like mm. do you feel that downhill might have lost that now or yeah. do you think it's is, is that for the better or is it for the worse or well i think in the early days the big thing was uh, because it was such a new sport, uh, it was dead. So lots of people got into it, people from all walks of life. It was people that, uh, you know, builders like myself, piss people, dentists, you know, anyone could do it. And I think everybody had the same sort of interest. So they were a bit excitable, shall we say, and yeah. they were doing the racing and you know, someone obviously at some point said, oh, we'll, you know, we'll camp out and we'll have a few beers. And then someone else saw that and then they had some beer. And then you get to an event where there's 2,000 people and everybody thinks, fuck it, let's have a beer. <laughs> um, so it, back then, I think it was a level playing field because everybody you know, had the odd drink and uh, well, most people got wasted, to be honest with you. But yeah, back then, everyone was doing the same thing. So it was a level playing field and everyone was in the same boat when it comes to racing. Whereas now, um, you know, I admire people nowadays. They, I think it's more of a professional sport now. There's no doubt about that. But yeah. um, I also like to see people having a good time. And I, I think a lot of people do forget that they're doing it primarily to have fun. Um, unless you're a, a paid professional rider where you're making a living from it, I think people need to sometimes take a bit of a step back and you know think about why they're doing it and mm. uh, get out there and have a good social and uh, make it fun for yourself. Yeah, no, I agree with you totally. And uh, the thing is as well, like you say, like back then because the sport was new, like the pinnacle of the sport were the people that were getting pissed, if that makes sense. Whereas if you look at a sport which had been around a lot longer, maybe something like motocross, you know, you go to mm. a, a club event, everyone's obviously going to be getting pissed, but maybe the pinnacle of the sport because it's had a lot more time to grow they're a bit more serious and it seems like downhill now is just sort of catching up maybe to that and i mean i mean even yeah, from well, the time i've been a fan it's changed so much do you know what i mean and that's it, in maybe like 10 years um, yeah i mean it's def definitely changed a lot and undoubtedly i think it's changed for the better in most ways because it's um it's becoming more recognized as a worldwide sport which is mm. cool um, but I'm definitely not planning on, um, uh, you know, sticking to the rules. And uh, I'm 42 now, and I'm, I'm, I still think I'm 22. And all I want to do is go out and have a laugh. And if it means having a pint, uh, you know, us boys at Pin TV, um, we like to think that people might, you know, look at us and say they're just like me. Yeah. And to be able to sit sit down and, and you know have a pint with us, and you know. Just have a good time, really. So I'm, I'm not going to be sticking to any of the modern day rules of being a, uh, a true professional. That ship has sailed. So let's uh, let's have some fun. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it, that's it. And that kind of leads me on to as well. Like uh, I was going to ask you, Jim. Obviously, we've seen in the last few years the the growth of enduro. Yeah. Um, I guess in some respects you've been at the forefront of that as well. To be honest, especially with your involvement in in enduro mag and stuff. Do you think that Enduro will get to like a downhill kind of level as far as like television goes and stuff like that? It's it's quite a weird one, isn't it, with Enduro because mm. it's um, it's <laughs> a straight participation sport and it's a big old 
big day on the bike and you know you'll never hardly ever hear an enduro rider saying oh i didn't ride enough today you know like at some downhillers they won't get enough lifts in a day what have you yeah but i think the biggest trouble is is it's like sort of tv if you to show it on tv it's never going to look as exciting as downhill it's never going to be as exciting for spectators um and also with enduro it's like you've got all this stuff going on in the uk all these little events and they're all fantastic they're all very grassrootsy and the main enduro has gone yeah and uh it is enduro something that should be so professional it's it's that weird question isn't it? or should it be more grassroots um you know but then you look at the step up to EWS is massive. You know, when we talk to like the likes of Vinny's out there, our mate, and um, don't or like listening to Rich Payne, who's doing or EWS or Bust. Yeah. And um, it's a big old day out there, isn't it? And they are for knowledge. So yeah. it needs someone to step up again, I guess, and do a British series. I wonder if um, if we're going to see some it. You know, come ag- come along again next year. Really, we'll mm. see. Yeah, it was a weird one when it got when I guess Sai Peyton Patton. I can't remember his name. Yeah, he, he roasted me when I had him on the podcast because I said it wrong. But I can't remember if I said Peyton or Patton. Just call him Putin. That's... All right. Just call him Putin. <laughs> but it was surprising <laughs> when he cancelled the series in a way. But you know, again, like you just said, part of me likes to think that it shouldn't be as serious as as that. Um, as having yeah, a British yeah. downhill series, it should be going away with your mates and just having a nice long day out on your bike. Exactly, exactly. They're so, the they're the events I prefer, really. The yeah. uh, the ones where you can ride around with your mates, do the stages with your mates, and you're not um, segregated into veterans, seniors, elite, all that. You know that to me that should be left for um, the downhill. But I suppose looking out on the other side, you have got to think about well where is the step up to EWS? You know, you, I suppose you've just got to go and do gnarly stuff, like um, go and doing some of those POC things in Scotland. Yeah. I mean, they look amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's very restricted as well in Joro, isn't it? Uh, a bit like downhill, where it depends where you live. Yep. Because, you know, yeah. down yeah, south they're a bit got, screwed, aren't they? Yeah, you've got people who live in the perfect location to be out, you know, and have whatever. How, yeah. however many hours out riding on gnarly stuff and other people who need to travel to, to somewhere and, and whatnot. But yeah, I totally agree. It's um, it's a strange one. There's no, there's no, um, what's the word? There's no, God, I've had a mind blank. Too much, uh, maybe not enough <laughs> coffee today. Um, Too much going out seeing your dealers. Yeah, it must be. It must be worn me out today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's no, um, it's no secret though that like the sport, and the, the discipline of enduro has like really helped the industry because, you know, yeah. again, every dealer I see, that's all they're selling right now. They're selling trail bikes. Um, yeah. So it's, do, it's done wonders for the sport. It's all but, opened up, hasn't it? You've got yeah. enduro bikes, you've got trail bikes, you've got enduro racing. But I, I wonder whether the actual enduro racing, whether that bubble has burst a little bit and people have gone, oh, I want to go with that. And everyone's had a go of it. And then... Quite a lot of them have said, yeah, it was all right, but I'd rather be out with my mates just riding, you know what I mean? That's exactly um, what I feel, yeah. Whereas Enduro for marketing is, well, it's spot on, isn't it, really? Because it's yeah. just another way of selling something, really. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm. No, it's going to be interesting to see it over the next few years, sort of where or what direction Enduro goes down. I mean, again, it's yeah. no secret that, that downhill is almost the pinnacle of our sport. Well, it is the pinnacle of our yeah. sport. It's the Formula yeah. One. It's what you can tune in and watch easily. Um, it's exciting and, and all that sort of stuff. So it'd be, it'd be yeah. cool, though, if they could somehow make Enduro like that in a, in a way where it is easy to just watch a few stages or, you know. Yeah. For me, it's almost well, like funny golf. Thing- in a, in a weird way. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, well, except it's not shit. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, I mean, golf shit, but, yeah, but <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like how it's televised, yes, it almost yeah, follows yeah. them round to certain se- certain sections, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, well, I don't know. We'll see. I'll tell you what is weird is how, like, uh, obviously I wrote for Enduro Mag for, I don't know, five years, and that was the pinnacle of, uh, well, it had the word in its title, and they have now actually completely come away from racing. They don't want anything to do with it, which is um, that shows what the word enduro means now. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it obviously you've stepped away from, from the Enduro Mag guys. Is that, um, just quickly, yeah. is that purely so you can focus more on, on your own thing, Pin TV? Um, yeah, it was, it's kind of, I was doing that. Um, it was, a lot of people don't realise I wasn't full time. Mm. Um, and I was doing a lot with them and then I started doing this vlogging after Doc um, said about doing the vlogging and I just want to say now when I mentioned Doc I want to just give him a because he's here with us anyway so I've got yeah. him he might beat me up give me a Shropshire headbutt but uh, <laughs> I just want to give him a massive thank you because obviously I wouldn't have got anywhere with Enduro Mag and Pinned without Doc because he is like uh, the brains behind it and he's a good photographer so so he, sat next to me. he sat next yeah. to me, there's a tear rolling down his eye. Yeah. <laughs> Both in handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically I said a few years ago about doing YouTube stuff to Enduro Mag and they weren't really into it. They said, oh, do a bit of vlogging, do your own thing. So I, I wasn't really interested. And then Doc said, you've got to do this vlogging, have a go, because we get out to some nice places. And I said, all right, I'll give it a go. Didn't know what I was doing. So I started messing about with the GoPro and um, just doing some little clips and little vlogs together when I'm out and about and messing around in different countries under the name MT Blog, which really rolls off the tongue. Does it? Um, and then uh, I decided this is all right. This is it's, you know it's a bit of fun. I'm going to call it Pin TV and I rebranded it. And then of course the magazine were like, "Well, hang on a minute, what's this?" Yeah, uh, you know, and it was a bit of a conflict of interest. Obviously, I got products of theirs that I'm using, and then I wasn't and um, didn't have any products got through pins at that time. Obviously, that's changed now. Yeah. Um, and I started enjoying it and started realizing it's actually a lot easier than writing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and writing is, I do love writing, but things like bike tests and that, I find it a bit of a headache because it's so easy to get things wrong. You know, when you're writing little things down, you have to find out stuff about them. And, yeah. Um, video, you can just check it and it's, it's easy to give it to Doc and get him to edit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so I ended up moving on. Uh, I have got one more article to do. We're actually fit, um, doing photos, me and Doc, tomorrow night on the Starling build, which is like my last sort of farewell article with Enduro Mag. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, it sounds like it's it's positive and it's going in the right direction, which is the main thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come back to some of the pin TV stuff shortly. I just want to quickly ask you, is there any um, plans to carry on with your flourishing Enduro career or is that ship sailed now? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, no. <laughs> the, the thing um, this year, obviously, with the demise of the BES, is that it's left a, a bit of a void in the calendar. So right. um, we, were, we were all disappointed, obviously, at first, um, because that's, you know, like Jim says, that's the next step down, really, from, from doing an EWS. So I think it is good to have a national series that carries that sort of... Um, um, you know, prestigeness, yeah. if that's a word, yeah. uh, for people to aim to. But um, it, it's not going ahead. Um, so what it does mean is that um, there's a lot of other races being put on around the UK, uh, and the other races then become more, um, you know, desirable, if you like. So it's not now a question of saying, well, we're just going to do this one big series. You could go and you can go and do. Um, you know, the Hard Rock, there's the Pedal Hounds Race Series, there's, like Jim says, the Pock one in Scotland, um, there's the mini Enduros, there's that much to choose from. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Every race you go to, it's still a race. And, you know, you're still there to do a job, and you're still there to have fun. So I'm still going to be doing Enduro, um, but that gap in the, um, in the calendar has also enabled me to concentrate back on some... Uh, downhill racing this year so um, I did the first national last weekend and uh, I felt a bit more um, you know like I really wanted to do more I had coming away from this weekend so I'm going to be doing um, you know the peer series uh, the nationals and I'm going to hopefully get to the Masters World Champs in Andorra as well this year. Oh awesome awesome. So we're, we're just going to sort of be putting ourselves around and doing whatever we can and um, you know just flying the flag for pins really and yeah, you had a good weekend last weekend too, right? Was it? Did you get second? Yeah, I did. I was yeah. first yeah. loser. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got smoked by Titley. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it Titley who beat you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, smoked, man. Yeah. yeah, I've just remembered. There's a bit of rivalry there, isn't there, which goes back many it years. Does. That's cool. It does. I mean, we've been mates for, well, since Dot, really. Again, 20 years, probably. And um, we just... Um, we just raced each other so many times and I mean I don't know what the overall is looking like but we've beaten each other and you know then I'll beat him back and he beats me and you know it, it's a weird thing because it's a friendly rivalry but none of us want to get beaten by each other but the respect is there and you know at the end of yeah. each race there's always a handshake and it's a it's cool to be able to race somebody that's you know got the same burning desire to win that race as you because you know if you do win you've earned it yeah, that guy, he's not going to give up. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, but it, it was great. You know, I had a great weekend. And, and I've got to say um, you know, congratulations to, to Cy and his team. They did do a good job in difficult conditions. I mean, it's, it's quite tight for parking, but everything flowed. Um, we got a lot of runs in in the end. The top half of the course was, was absolutely brilliant, like steep, rocky, technical. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I wasn't the only one that thought the bottom was a bit peddly. Um, but, you know, sometimes what you can do with the track is that's what it. you dealt with, it, and that's the hill. So to get to the finish, you've got to pedal. But yeah. everyone knows I'm not the biggest fan of that. But I give it a good go. And um, to be four seconds back on Titley, I didn't think it was too bad. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll meet again soon for another race. But <laughs> it was a good weekend. I had a real good time. I was listening to something the other day, and they'd... Uh, they had like a, a pretty similar rivalry, but they'd introduced something called anytime shots. Um, oh, so right. basically, so if he beats you, uh, he can then basically make you do a shot of any um, liquor <laughs> at any time. So oh, yeah, wow. it sounded like a pretty fun game. So like, for example, this guy was literally pushing up to a like a race run. He's like, right, two shots that you rode is, you know, got to do them right yeah. now this very second. <laughs> Do it just yeah, lose on purpose, Dan? <laughs> yeah, I would. I am an alcoholic. I do like a beer. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Uh, we had another uh, a guy actually message me through the the social media stuff on, on the podcast cha- um, channels. Um, he wanted me to at least mention the Shropshire ri- Shropshire riding scene. I have a bit of a lisp, lisp sometimes, so sorry yeah. about that. Shropshire riding scene. He said that like often. You know, obviously, it's no secret that I'm based in Sheffield. The company's based in Sheffield. I've got a lot of friends around Sheffield. Did you notice how I emphasized a lot? Uh, well. Well. Yeah, a lot yeah. of friends in Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just kind of wanted you to, if, if you know, just sort of tell people about the Shropshire riding scene a little bit and exactly what's going on, because the scene's obviously pumping around there, really, um, quite similar to Sheffield. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so, um, there's a lot of riders here. There's a lot of history of riding in here. Um, if you go back, obviously you've got Stu, you've got Donny, you've got Matt Farmer back in the day. Uh, Titley, probably been racing longer than anyone. Uh, obviously, he doesn't live here now, but he's a Shropshire lad. You, uh, the Afton's just over the border. Um, and then, Rich Guppy. Yeah, Rich Guppy. You've got Sandy's got his shop, and you know yeah. Sandy's quite a well-known lad. Uh, and all these, it's a bit weird. You've got a lot of little sort of sections of people um, who ride. It's like they don't really tend to all come together. I think they're very sort of different people. Mm. But there is a, a fantastic scene. And we're very <laughs> lucky, like when you had Sandy on, uh, I remember he explained, you know, we got so many good riding spots within an hour of us. So we're, we're dead lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it is a good scene, really. But it'd be nicer if uh, a few more of them come to our show on a Monday night. I'm just getting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. uh, that'll no doubt build, man. That we'll uh, we'll get on to yeah, that right now. Yeah. I want it right. Okay, so let's. We found out a little bit about you guys, which is rad. Really cool to hear. Like and, and me as well. I mean, I didn't know a lot of that stuff about you, which is cool. Um, so Pin TV, obviously this is your latest venture. It looks to me like it's growing exponentially, which is amazing to see. So let's start off with sort of like, you sort of alluded to it quickly just before, Jim, but what made you guys yeah. start this? I mean, did you just see a gap in the market or or what What was going on? It was kind of the vlogging right. went into a brand. And then um, I look, I mean... 
I've had a few people say about GMBN with Donny saying, oh, it's a bit like that, but it's not like that. And I, I guess it is in a way, uh, all respect to them. I mean, they've done amazingly well. They've got half a million followers, and but they've had big backing. They've had a massive money put in from the start, from Google, etc. Uh, right. And they've got so much staff, etc. And with us, it's me, Stu, Doc and then a young lad called Darcy who's just jumped on board, 16 year old lad doing videos. So, uh, yeah, we just, the live show was just a bit of a piss about on Facebook to start with. Yeah. Um, but then Doc was always pushing to us, so YouTube is where it's at. We've got to do YouTube because obviously we do want to make something of this eventually, a bit of a career maybe. Um, there's no money in Facebook at all, nothing. You got we got a lot better numbers on Facebook when we did the live show, but then that's obvious because everyone's on Facebook at night. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's just Stu dying in the background, by the way. I've got to give him. <laughs> he's a little bit poorly. He's come around mine. He's in a right grump because he's feeling oh, no. ill. I yeah. apologise to everybody that's listening that <laughs> I, I feel like I've smoked about two hundred bags, and I've never smoked yeah. a bag of pipe. I feel rough as shit. <laughs> he smoked plenty of pipes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, you well, sort of, well um, so as far as what made you start it, so you said that you you'd left Enduro or you were leaving Enduro Mag. Yeah, um, it's like reviews and things. When you look online, uh, you see obviously you see loads of reviews that are written. Yeah, and it's a phone world, isn't it? Now everybody you see, wherever you go, everybody's got their head buried in a phone. It's you know we can moan about it all we want, but it's just it, that's what's happened. Mm. Um, so instead of moaning about it, you've got to utilise it and think, well, what can we do about this? How can we make something of it? And thing is, when someone's having a, a lunch break or a tea break, they don't want to read an article that takes half an hour. They they want to look at a five minute review or stuff yeah. like that, and and that's. That's this summer when we can hopefully get a bit of mo more money out of the job. That's where we can go with it. I want to start doing a lot more reviews of bikes and components. And then we're going to do, we've got like adventure ride in Ireland. Uh, yeah. That's going ahead. And like sort of race, race reviews, like our vlogs, that's kind of like, it's going to more towards a race review now. And it's just, it's more bloody fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, the writing was, I don't know, it sort of does me head in a little bit. I don't mind doing the odd bit. I, writing, I much prefer writing about an adventure. Mm. Um, and Enduro Mag ended up being very we, as in we like this, we do this. And it's not, they don't like it personal, you know, as in I like to write, I think this and I did that. I know it sounds a bit like uh, selfish, but yeah. I think. Sounds like this, a right prick. Well, I am a prick. <laughs> but um, but in the UK, I think people want that personal touch, really. So the video really sort of covers that quite well, I reckon. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. So we'll see how yeah. it goes. So how did um, how did Stu get involved in this then? Obviously, you said before, Jim. It was. I'm not putting words into your mouth here. I'm really sorry, but it was kind of your idea to do it. You started doing a few bits, and then how did Stu? How did you come well, on board? Uh, it's more Doc's idea, really. Okay. <laughs> to be oh, sorry. Here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. We got to give Doc the the, the credit there. Um, and Doc's idea was the live show, and then um, I said to Stu, "Do you fancy coming on?" And that was it. It just went from there, didn't it, Stu? Unfortunately, yes. And now my Mondays are taken up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so instead no, of recovering no, from the race weekend it, you're out doing that instead <laughs> yeah no do you know what um i'm i'm so pleased to have been asked to do this joking aside um i must admit when these two boys did say originally this is what we're going to do um i mean bearing in mind we're talking about a bloke here that had 13 motocross bikes in two years because he couldn't make <laughs> his mind up right <laughs> Yeah. He's tried. He's tried more mountain bikes than I've had shit, and you know, <laughs> alarm bells ring. But um, I, I thought about it and I watched a bit of what they were doing, and I got to say, these two blokes got it right, and I yeah. think they're onto something. And um, you know, I'm pleased I was asked to be a part of it, and you know, something I really look forward to every Monday. And you know, it's nice to be involved with. And it's nice to meet people out there uh, and to be able to give advice. And, you know, 
we have been in it a long time. Um, we know a little bit about it. And, um, you know, there's always somebody who's after, a, you know, a, a bit of advice or some assistance or anything like that, really. And um, we're lucky to be able to do that. Yeah. It's quite know, funny. Uh, uh, it's quite funny when so long, because the first sort of, probably the first four or five of them, uh, Stu's got a natural demeanour of looking grumpy. Um, he's not a grumpy person when you get to know him, but he looks grumpy. And loads of people will say, can't you fucking make him smile? What's the problem? <laughs> so on the, on the card, like I've got my stuff written down, the odd stuff that we're going to say, right at the top in massive capitals. It <laughs> doesn't anymore because he does smile now. It said, Stu, smile. And then Doc <laughs> would occasionally show him this another card, massive one saying, smile. Uh, it was funny, but it's... Um, I mean, this the presenting malarkey was new to both of us, really. I yeah. mean, we've both done a bit of that stuff in the old days with Sprung and all that, but not exactly as presenters. Um, and it was a bit weird at first because, you you know, you, you don't know what to say and you, you feel very conscious that there's a camera there. But I think I think we're relaxing into it. The show was probably the first one in the boiler room because we moved to this cafe where I felt totally relaxed and at ease with right. it all. Yeah. And I know it, to be honest, man, it's, um, it's a very similar, it's very similar to me and the journey I've gone on with this podcast. You know, initially I started yeah. out absolutely no idea what I was doing or, yeah. you know, I can hold a conversation, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I got a few friends involved straight away. Well, initially just to sort of try and get your confidence up. And for me, it's yeah. like the turning point was almost, well, I've said, I'm not saying like I'm doing it better or anything like that, but it's, it's just about remembering just like, <laughs> Just relax yeah. into it. Like you're not trying to impress anyone. I, you know, as much as I love having people listen to this, at the end of the day, I'm doing it because I'm enjoying doing it and I'm enjoying watching it build. So if you don't enjoy it, don't listen. It's that simple. But yeah, that's me, right. fair comment. That's that's a good comment, mate. Exactly. Yeah, because but, you know, a lot of people, are, I think, may look at um, look at us and think, hey, up there trying to be, you know, the next super TV presenter, and that's oh, certainly yeah. not the case because. You know, we're not. It's as simple as that. We're not. We we started doing it initially for a laugh, and we're still doing it for a laugh because we love it. Yeah, we're yeah. not. We're not trying to be something we're not. And um, yeah. like you say, if people don't like it, they won't listen to it. If they do like it, then you know, hopefully, it's made somebody's day a bit better. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, and that's what you I need to remember to, all the time. Uh, go on. No, go. I, I was just going to say I that's what to you need some, to remember. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I've tried to have some advice off certain people um, who are in the business and like I spoke to Donny about it, I spoke to Rich Cunningham about it and then I remember when someone, I don't see Dan Brown that often anymore, but a, a mutual friend said, oh, I spoke to Dan Brown and he says you're definitely on to something and he's like, well, you know how connected he is in the bike yeah. world and he definitely speaks his mind. And when you hear stuff like that, you think, maybe I am onto something here. And, um, you know, Connie was in charge. I'll tell you what, I was paying you as well, because uh, obviously he's like, get kid. <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> just wing it and have a laugh and you'll be all right. And uh, he's right. Just, yeah, just got to yeah. wing it. That's my life, wing it. <laughs> I think it's, it's the best thing. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, for me, the Luca Shaw one, which we did, which was quite a number of episodes back now, that was... For me, that was like the scariest one because, you know, yeah. I'm very honest when I say like my downhill knowledge and, and general racing knowledge isn't amazing sometimes. You know, there's only yeah. so much stuff you can apparently fit in your head and I fill it full of shit constantly. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, I went into that, you know, loads of hype around Luca with the new syndicate sign in and I was bloody nervous. You know what I mean? And I yeah. sort of came out of it thinking, oh, that was, that was terrible. But then a few people messaged saying that they enjoyed it and stuff and sort of like, after that, I put a bit of a, a line in the sand and went, right, from now on, you just enjoy it. It is what it is. Like I said to you guys before we started yeah. recording this, I was like, I've not really done much planning, but no doubt we can just sit here and have a chat for an hour and, and people will hopefully enjoy listening to it. it. It's pretty much that simple. But I yeah. found that the more, you know, obviously this thing, we've had some, uh, you know, some high profile, obviously you guys fit into that some higher oh, profile yeah. guests and it, it does yeah. put a bit of extra pressure on, but <laughs> it does put a bit of extra pressure on, but at the end of the day, you know, there's still people. It, it, it's not that difficult to just sit and have a conversation, you know? And, yeah. um, 
you know, it, it is what people. it is. That's why I see it with any mountain biker, no matter how famous they are. Yeah. They're only a person. Yeah. You know, they still they still have to go to sleep and have to have a shit. So yeah. they're just yeah, people. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, shit yeah, still it's... smells and they've still got an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an arsehole. He's in the other room talking to you, Dave. <laughs> what a boy what a boy um so yeah you mentioned uh, like the, just go ahead, sorry jim go on oh uh, sorry i was um the other thing i was going to say about having Stu on that's really useful is Stu was um apart from being like proper village idiot pisshead drinker when he was younger he's had quite a clean living really so he's got a hell of a good memory so when right. we're on um when we're doing the show you you may have noticed I'm quite often looking to him going, uh, what's that? <laughs> you know, because obviously I was a 90s rave kid. Right, and, okay. <laughs> uh, I've got absolutely shite memory because of those days. And yeah, Stu will, I'm sure Stu will confirm now. I did it last night, didn't I, with Callum, whatever his name is. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> mate, Ca- Callum Russell, you silly son. You called him Callum yeah. Roberts. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm always doing it. <laughs> it was all that dancing you did years ago. It was obviously the dancing that fucked you up. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all that bobbing up and down, isn't it? It's bad for you. Yeah. 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 It is. Dancing That's career has not done you any favours, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, it is. It's, it's it's one of them. It's a learning game a little bit, too. It's just learning to, to ease into it and just have fun, and, and that that is what it is. The end yeah. of the you, know what is you, know, you know what is quite refreshing is the... Um, you know, when we first started, um, we're inevitably going to be slightly nervous when you've got a guest coming in to sit on the sofa to, um, you know, talk about what it is they're up to, who they are, what they do. Yeah. And it's it's very refreshing to know that even very high profile riders have all said, can't believe how nerve wracking it is sat between you two. <laughs> um, yeah. And that, yeah. that's mainly down to Jim's wandering hands probably, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I mean it just shows they're normal people, and it's it's good to know that because it relaxes us as well. I mean, yeah, no, no one's better than anyone else. We're just there to have a bit of a chat and have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, yeah, mm. and I feel that you guys have got a really good balance. You know, you've got Jim, who's um, yeah, you've got a reputation of being one of the more finicky riders out there. Yeah, or, and maybe testers. I what think does, that's fair to say, isn't it? Finick. What does finicky mean? Sorry, you've lost me on that one. So finicky Pick, means picky. Yeah, just picky. You know, you're quite. Oh picky. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. I remember going back when we kind of started hooky. I was out seeing dealers and I was chatting to yeah. Johnny Cheatham. Um, oh yeah, I love and, Johnny. What yeah, so we'd just taken joystick on, and Johnny Johnny was like, "Right, first thing you need to do, you need to get Jim from Enduro Mag to test it to test the stuff." Then you've got <laughs> yeah. a really good gauge as to what's going on, and luckily you gave everything that we sent you a really good review. But yeah, yeah. I sort of knew from then, I was like, you know, a few people said the same. It's like, oh, yeah, send it to Jim. Jim will test it. He knows his stuff. Um, yeah. And if Jim's using it, it's, it's going to be good, basically. So that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you've got Stu. I'm not saying you're not finicky, Stu, but obviously you've got, you know, a, a strong race background and stuff like that. Um, and it looks like Doc's the, the brains behind the operation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Doc, is, Doc is flat out. Uh, that's what people don't realise. Doc is flat out behind. I mean, he spends days doing these like Google tutorials to to find out how to spread a, you know spread us better, pin TV better, get us in the better search engines. He's always telling us keywords to put, you know, when we're working the social media, which as you know is like a job on its own. It is, yeah. Um, and he's oh yeah, he's just. It just has that sort of way of knowing. It was a tech guy originally, you know. He, yeah. He's um, used to sort of fix computers. To, have you turned it off and on yet? Type bloke. Blow uh, sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His missus does that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, yeah. Dave, Dave, I've got to, I've got a butt in there, mate. The, the truth <laughs> is that the dot was going to fuck off and leave this show, but after Jim's uh, little statement there, I think he might stay. <laughs> no, we owe a lot we owe, we owe a lot to dot without dot we, this no, none of this would happen the same with me with enduro mag to be honest you know you can't because yeah. i'm not a photographer I've, I've done a few photos and they're average but um without a photographer 
a writer is nothing in in the magazine world unless you work for a big magazine and you know you can take them with you which we couldn't and um yeah so doc helped me sort of put myself out there with enduro mag and he's helped to set up pinned awesome that's cool really cool and uh obviously you see like i said before you've seen a gap in the market um vlogging is obviously huge i mean you look at some of the people online they might not necessarily necessarily be mountain bike folk but yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of people watching vlogs out there that's for sure and they can hook you in as well i found i've started watching one recently and you kind of just i don't know wondering oh what's that guy done today <laughs> it's really weird yeah, but, no, but it does yeah, it no, does hook you in so um, the followers the numbers some of them get is just outrageous i mean i don't think in mountain biking you could ever get that kind of numbers that these sort of general lifestyle guys yeah. like Casey Nice that get where they'll put a video out and it'll get like three million hits in a mm. day and they're earning twenty grand off each video they're doing every day. Although I wouldn't mind that, don't get me wrong. Well, obviously. but that's <laughs> you know that shows the power of YouTube. Um, so yeah, it's uh, oh, we also had a bit of advice um, off. Uh, Let's just say I've got a family member who's very, very high up at YouTube, and no I'm way. hoping one day he'll pull some strings for me. <laughs> That's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sick. So, like, where do you see? I know you've sort of alluded on it again before, but where do you see Pin TV going? Is it just a case of just keep upping it and upping it and upping it? Well, um, yeah, I think. Um, still, can you die outside, please. Hopefully, Stu uh, makes it through to the uh, next the next live show. <laughs> I think the sky's, the sky's the limit, isn't it? Because yeah. um, I I really want um, the live show to always be a big part of it. I want that to be something like, for instance, you know, the Malvins is going on next year, and uh, Side Payton said he wants us there three of those nights in the main arena doing our live show because mm. you know he can see the future in it. I mean, that sort of thing's amazing. Um, and we'll keep going, keep bashing that out. And it's that thing of once you get advertising money and bits and pieces, a bit more money coming in, then you can start putting more things out there, more reviews, more adventures, more tests. Um, And we're always thinking of stuff, but it's always limited by money, really. You know, that's why the likes of GMBN have done so well, because obviously they've started off with a lot of money, which would be amazing. Definitely, definitely. And they've got already a very good platform to start from. Yeah. I mean, uh, with definitely. cycling network and stuff. Yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, there's a piece of the pie out there for everybody. That's the cool thing. And, uh, again, I've gone through a similar thing with this podcast. It's like, you know, obviously started it, and then a few other people have started podcasts, which I think is amazing. And I've had people say, oh, you're not, you're not bothered that they've started one. It's like... No, not at all. Like, you uh, know, there's plenty of space for people. It yeah. helps. It's, it's helping everybody, you know. Um, that's my take on it. I've got no hard feelings towards anyone who started a podcast. It's certainly well, the way, wasn't, the way to I wasn't that, the first. So. The, way, the way to see that is that, like, a BMW will get better when it's uh, Mercedes has got better because they have to outdo yeah. that Mercedes. So it, it's healthy competition, and it? It, makes it, is, it yeah. makes you better. Exactly. Well, I'm hoping to sort of do some collab stuff, but we'll see. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm considering doing yeah. some stuff if we can, but we'll see. But yeah, I, I think more, the more the merrier, personally. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's all good for the sport. So I mean, yeah. iTunes Definitely. recently started segregating and having a separate cycling section. So yeah. it Sort of shows that cycling, even as a as a as a sport, has grown enough so that iTunes recognise it as having its yeah, own it's separate great, isn't it? entity. So. It's cool. I mean, we didn't make it in the top 20 yet, but that is what it is. I'm not. I've got to say, uh, <laughs> your show, your one with um, Ollie Wilkins is my favourite by that by was hilarious. Yeah, that was hilarious. Was, I was listening to that at uh, work about uh, a few weeks ago. And he's yeah. just great, isn't he? Yeah, people love that one. That's I, I personally really enjoyed it. And you always get that feeling as well when you finish doing it. It's like... I've literally just sat and had a chat with a friend for an hour and it's not yeah. difficult at all. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, figuring out not to put pressure on yourself. I mean, before going into doing that, I'd never, I've never met Ollie before. You know, I didn't really know a great deal about him apart from obviously what you find out in mags and all that sort of stuff over the years. But yeah. easy to do sometimes, you know, people will just sit and yeah. chat and Loic was the same. You know, you, you think, fuck oh, man, I'm talking, you know, Loic Bruni. I mean, oh my God. 
but yeah. it's just a dude. It's just a dude, you know. And we constantly yeah. message each other now, just chatting. It's it's weird, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's cool. But that's kind of what you want, isn't it? You know, it's we're just putting just putting stuff out there for people to listen to. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's uh, so far really good. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a, a few listener questions to go through, if that's okay. Just there's a few. Fire um, amen. I want to. Uh, we had one guy actually. I can't remember his name, so I'm, I'm, I'm being really rude here. But he wanted to know a little more about your um, recent build, Jim. Uh, the dude oh, is right. obviously a bit of a, a bit of a tech geek, which I'm gonna yeah. be. I'm gonna confess that I'm personally not, but I want to know more about the <laughs> the Starling build that you've. It is a Starling, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, I tested the original Starling, the first one, about nearly two years ago now, and that was six fifty. And when it come along with this skinny tubing and made of steel i i gotta be honest i was like what the fuck is this thing and i rode it and I, it was a nice bike but i was blown away by how quiet it was and then i got to meet the owner um and it's literally a guy in a shed doing it in bristol mm -hmm. so then it turned out that uh, for this year um the way things went the Jura mag etc i wanted to go with a very small brand so I contacted him and said, he thought about a 29er. And he says, yeah, I've thought about it. And this was before he brought the murmur out. I said, well, what about doing me frame? Because um, I knew he did custom geometry. And he says, yeah, I'm well up for that. And uh, so, yeah, he's, um, he said, what do you want? And I've ridden all these bikes. And one of the ones that I was very blown away with was the pole uh the evo link the okay. uh 140 29 er so yeah basically it's no secret i copied that geometry um so i sent that off to joe uh, to stalin he said yeah we can do that maybe a little bit shorter on the chain stays because i think the poles are something like four five five so we've gone uh right. i think four or five um but it's the reach is it's a 29 er it's got a uh, reach of 510, which is super long. It's got a 62-degree head angle, super slack, 145 mil travel, 150 on the front with the Olin 36s. Uh, I've just took the Olin's rear coil off because it was far too linear. It was I couldn't pop it off anything. So I've gone with the Fox, uh, the X2 on the back, and it's got DI2, MVHV, wide rims, uh, Hook Norris in, what else have I got? Rental cockpit, um, XTR crank. So it's a hell of a build. It's a right, you know, it's a real <laughs> attention seeker, uh, yeah. I've got to admit. And I'm getting used to it. Um, it's by far the quietest bike I've ever ridden. It doesn't make a sound. That's something to do with the way, apparently, the way that the sound resonates with the tubing. But, yeah, amazing okay, right. bike. You'll you'll see lots of it on social media, put it That's that way. That's how quick you're going, isn't it? Yeah, well, they could do a fucking oil painting of me. They don't have to take photos. <laughs> I was going to say, my bikes, my bikes are always quiet when they sat still, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. No, that's cool, man. Thanks for thanks for clearing that up. I know I can't remember the guy's name, but I will be sure to to yeah. tell him. Just call him Dave. Days. That's what I call everyone yeah. Dave when I don't there's, remember the name. There's way too many Daves. Hence why I changed my name, dude. Hence why I yeah. changed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right, we've got another question, uh, Jim. Again, this is for you. Sorry about that, but hopefully uh -huh, he's yeah, uh, sorting himself popular. out behind us. Um, oh, it's uh, at Andrew Woodall on Instagram. Andrew's a long-time listener. He, I actually yeah. met him. I actually met him in a shop a while back, which was crazy. Um, but yeah, he recognised my voice from across a shop. It was wow. wow. It's, I still think about that. It's really strange, but really nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, at Andrew Woodall, Jim, how did you get into writing features for Dirt and Enduro Mag? I know you've kind of spoke about it before, but was there an initial or a major step you took to get? Yeah within that scene uh yeah very simple racing racing downhill back in 97 doing the midlands super series uh no one was writing about it uh contacted dirt magazine at the time uh that's when mike rose who current news has just left Dirt magazine yeah, today that. yeah yeah um and jonesy's at the helm good luck with that one um and uh yeah so basically i, I sent them um, 
I don't even know if it was an email in those days. Probably a phone call. Remember them? Yeah, um, probably a letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I sent a pigeon over to them and uh, said, do you want me to do a race report on the Midlands? And they just said yes, um, got on with it. And it, it just moved on from there, doing the odd bit, bits until it grew. Yeah. Um, and the same with Enduro Mag. When I got into it in 2012, um, I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind writing again. And someone said, oh, there's, there is an Enduro Mag. It's in Germany, I think. And I sent them some it. Sent them one of these modern email thing in the jigs, <laughs> and um, they said, uh, "Well, do you know people?" I said, "Well, I might do. I know the Athertons, and I think they thought I was joking." They said, "Well, do us a Dan Atherton interview." Of course, he's like twenty minutes down the road. I went and did it, got it right. straight to him, and then the rest was history. You know, moved on from that. Excellent. So that's that. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't been sacked. I will just say I haven't been sacked. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah. Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay the next one again we've, we've pretty much spoke about this but people obviously wanted to know uh scott cordy who also is one of our dealers shout out pedal addiction um yeah is it just for the love of the sport and enjoyment of doing the show or do they hang on i can't read my own writing da, 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 or do you make a little money from from it as well um, no. i'm just gonna yeah, put in yeah. here as well I don't think there's any no. shame in saying that you might earn a few quid out of it when, if or when you do. Yeah, yeah. Should, I, should I carry on with that one, Jimmy? Yeah, you take yeah, that carry one, on. Stuart. Okay, yeah, we we want to be totally transparent uh, about uh, what we do earn and what we don't earn. And I think it's at this point people will want to know. Uh, this week we've made seven quid. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah. It's enough to go to uh, shop and get you some, some pills and stuff. For yeah, your exactly, exactly. So, no, I mean, absolutely, 100%, the reason we're doing it is because of the love of the sport. And we felt that there is a slight gap in the market for something like this. But at the same time, um, if you have the choice of, um, you know, doing what we do on the show, uh, traveling around the world, riding your bike, as opposed to stood in a shitty trench laying concrete, uh, yeah, which, yeah. One, which one would you choose? Because that's what I'm doing <laughs> at the moment. So, yeah. you know, if, if we had got the opportunity that we could all make a living out of it and our kids are well into the biking, you know, it would be stupid to, you know, deny the fact that we'd like it to go somewhere and it could be um, something for the future of our kids to pick up on as well. Definitely, definitely. And I'd say... Um, like the start of Enduro Mag, you know, I worked for nothing for them for a few years and then they paid me a bit and there really is no money in, in journal, mountain bike journalism. I will, I think anyone in journalism will admit that. Mm. Um, and the YouTube thing, this is, it's also new and we are trying to get, we have got people involved in the show. You know, we've got, I will reel them off quickly, V Tire, we've got Invisi Frame, um, we have Stu, Sax. help me out here. Bum Sax pants, yeah, bum butter, <laughs> and trailhead and mud hugger. But yeah. I mean, it's it's not much money because we don't have the viewing heads to sort of call, bring in that money. But this is, these are guys who wanted to get involved from the start. Um, we are, however, in talks uh, at the moment with Maxis <laughs> about uh, sponsoring our vlogs, which could be a lot better. Right. Um, you know, a bit more money coming in. And all the money that will come in um, is going to go straight back in the pot and to buy equipment and send us here, there, and everything. But it, I'm making an, uh doc, really. We're both making massive sacrifices at the moment because we're having days doing this yeah. where we're not yeah. getting a penny. So yeah. it, as for the money, no, it's the opposite of making money at the moment, but it is a good love. Okay, this next listener question comes from Jamie Edwards, who is the owner of Wide Open Magazine. And uh, it's a funny one. So here goes. Would you rather have A, dicks for legs, or B, a leg for a dick? The dick legs are fully functional, but walking, but not capable of anything further. The leg dick performs exactly as you'd expect it would. It's just your... It's just leg-sized. 
the fuck has uh, he been smoking? I don't know, but, he, but he's, he put it in and he said, he, he, he sent the question, he then instantly messaged me and said, you don't have to ask it. I was like, dude, you've asked it, it's getting asked. <laughs> Jamie, all I'm going to say is, you haven't seen me with my trousers off. I don't need to worry about that question. I've already got a leg dick. <laughs> all right, tripod. What about you, Stu? <laughs> yeah, I'll go, I'll go with the leg dick. Yeah, leg dick. <laughs> why, why not? Okay. Yeah, I think the leg dick's probably the one to go with, I think. <laughs> I like that question. So you, you ask any woman and they'll tell you that men think with the dicks. So you may, yeah, well a, yeah. may as well have a massive bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can think more then. There Brilliant. You go, then. Brilliant. All right, guys. Well, that pretty much, um, yeah, great ending to the show. Cheers for that, Jamie. Um, just quickly, do you guys want to just shout out some of your social media links or anything at all that you want to yeah. promote or whatever? Just just shout it out and let's let's try uh, and help you with that. Yeah, I. Um, my own personal uh, Instagram is Jim Buchanan955. Then we have uh, pinned TV at pinned TV UK, yep. um, and on YouTube pinned TV we have our live show is half past seven on Monday night, um, and we have a Facebook page. It is just search pinned TV, and over to you, Stu. <laughs> I just. Put my ring back in because it's just coughed up again. <laughs> um, yeah, my Instagram is at you. Yeah, you have to re-record this while I'm starting to lose uh, my voice, mate. Definitely not. My, my Instagram is at Hughes nine five four. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jim has pretty much said to do with Pin TV the other the other links. Um, and I think this is probably a real good time to literally just say thank you so much to all the people that have um, followed us, subscribed to us, um, you know, believed in us, you know, with this so-called small thing we're doing, you know, yeah. like, the, like those people to help us on our way, um, you know, we couldn't have done it. So we just want everyone to know that we're so grateful for, you know, the yeah, following so- and me too, I think. We we sold a hat in Canada today, and I was well, amazed. Hey. It blew me away. Was, That's I had rad. to send a hat to Canada. That's yeah. sick. Good work. Good work. That's yeah. cool. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's um, Yeah, well, thanks so much, guys, for doing this. Huge thank you as well to Doc, obviously, who helped you guys, yeah. you, you older guys out with, this, with the Skype and stuff and getting it all yeah. figured out. So huge thank you <laughs> yeah. to you, Doc, as well. Much appreciate your time, guys. It's been a pleasure to sit and have a chat with you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to much. all the Pin TV listeners who have listened in as well, hopefully. And uh, we'll no doubt catch up with you both soon. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. And there we have it, folks, episode 23. Again, huge thank you if you listen to the podcast. And even bigger thank you if you made it to the end. Um, I know we had some sound problems. It's always tough when you grab two people um, on one Wi-Fi connection. Um, it, it sometimes causes a few problems and obviously Stu was having a few issues too with his um, cold or whatever he's picked up but anyway um, huge thank you again for listening in um, if you have enjoyed this episode please let us know tell the guys from PIN that you listened um, leave us a review on iTunes again it means the absolute world to us if you can leave a review it massively helps the podcast and just let let us know in general you know give us a follow on some social media networks at the hook it podcast on Facebook and Instagram um, Twitter it's just at hook it products and uh, that's pretty much it um, keep an eye out for some um, competitions this week and also we've got a couple of amazing guests lined up for the next couple uh, of people some really big downhill names um, so yeah there we go over and out enjoy peace out <laughs>